When reaching the end of any good video game, we want to feel like we've accomplished something. That tangible moment that most gamers have experienced putting the controller down and taking the time to reflect on the story, the characters, and the experience as a whole is both satisfying and reflexive. You win. Just go. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and click on the links in the description to vote on upcoming content. It's why a bad ending can feel kind of like a betrayal, especially if it's to a great video game or worse, video game franchise. If a game is awful from the start, you don't have any expectations for its ending, or you just stop playing before you get to that point. But if you're captivated by what the game has to offer, a terrible conclusion could ruin the entire experience. Calling something anything the worst ending of all time is never really easy, but for a lot of fans, Mass Effect 3's conclusion fits that bill. Then you will die knowing that you failed to save everything you fought for. In previous Mojo lists, we've acknowledged the faults in Commander Shepard's final moments. But at the time, we never felt strongly enough to name it the worst ending ever. But let's take some time today to reevaluate that conclusion. As you may know, Bioware tried to rectify the situation with an extended cut. But the question remains, is the ending really that bad? No matter how far we advance, we will remember the sacrifices of those who made it possible. Keep in mind that this isn't just the end to a singular video game, it's the end to an entire trilogy. We first met Commander Shepard in 2007, a character we took complete control of. We customized Shepard's appearance, background, sex or gender, and as the story progresses, even Shepard's attitude and personality is shaped by the player. We had a hand in every single decision they made. The real draw? Our actions traveled with us throughout each installment of the series. What we did in Mass Effect 1 carried over in parts 2 and 3. So, when it came time for the final decision, our expectations had basically reached the stars. There are a lot of fans out there who can't simply replay a single game in the series. If they want to replay Mass Effect 3, they have to go back and play through the entirety of the first two games as well. In the minds of many players, it's all one game, one story based around their decisions, and their decisions have to be maintained and respected. It's one thing to have an ending that fizzles out after a few hours of gameplay. But fans of the trilogy had been waiting five years and invested hundreds of hours in not Shepard's story, but their Shepard's story. A story with so many options and branching paths, both large and small, that everyone got to feel like their version was somewhat unique. In that way, the players, probably more so than any other single player series in gaming history up to that point, felt like they had ownership over the entire franchise. There's something I must do before it gets worse. I must. So we'd like to point out what we feel is an obvious flaw. It's not the actual events of the finale, but the plot itself which was the problem. It's not that the ending was anticlimactic. We actually felt like we hadn't gotten a proper ending at all. Sure, we saw what happened to Shepard, but the game forgot about the rest of its characters, characters we bonded with throughout the entire series. This wasn't just about Shepard, it was about his crew the places they visited, and all the other people they met along the way. Because everyone's game can be so different, there's a fair amount of variations for who will and won't be dead, and their conclusions are left kind of ambiguous. If this was truly the end of all of their stories, fans needed to know what happened to these people long term, and they never got that closure. Probably never will. More than simply not getting all of the answers that they wanted, was that despite the hundreds of hours of decisions made, was the frustrating, crushing realization that no matter what else you had done throughout the entirety of these three massive games, everyone who plays the game ends up in that same room, alone and faced with the exact three same choices. No matter what Shepard does or doesn't do, who he trusts, betrays, saves, sacrifices, the trappings of video game design connect all of the paths right back up again into one single irritating moment. A moment with three seemingly irrelevant choices. Shepard dies, the Reapers get taken out, the mass relay network gets destroyed, the Normandy is stranded somewhere, and a child asks to hear more stories about the Shepard. Oh, and the sky changes color depending on your choice. Sarcastic woot. Had this just been one bad ending out of a possible three, that'd probably be a different story. But to have a bad ending that gets repeated with a few tweaks when it's supposed to be a galaxy changing decision, not only did all of our choices not seem to matter, but even the final decision they gave players changed virtually nothing. All of us, synthetic and organic, have been changed. And here we're coming to the real meat of the problem, choice or rather lack thereof. 
Games that give you choices are often bold, unique ways of storytelling, as the turn of events depend on your actions. This is especially true with the way games end. We want just as many options with the conclusion as we had with the introduction and the gameplay that followed. There have been many games where the final choice has been lacking, but no one expected that from a series that was so dependent on choice that your save file actually carried over into new titles. Players came to rely on that save file. Go online and you'll find stories about how far fans went to recover their files. So, when we reached the end, it felt like we'd been lied to by the very game itself and the people who made it. BioWare had done a really good job at keeping up the illusion that everything was unique and that your decisions matter, but the ending broke that bubble. It pulled away the sheet and ta-da, the Emperor has no clothes. What? Where am I? This isn't anything new as developers try to make big promises that sometimes aren't kept, but because the series was so good, so new, and elaborate and fun, we absolutely believed that we were getting a slam dunk conclusion. The backlash and rage over the ending of the final game needs to be viewed as a compliment to the series as a whole. And we will remember that this chance for a new life did not come without cost. Does Mass Effect's ending deserve the bad rap it gets? Kinda, yeah. It's an ending that felt panicked, safe, and even kind of thrown together. When examined next to the entire series as a whole, the ending is kind of inexcusable, because up until that point, the games had maintained the illusion that your choices actually mattered. Like we said before, the ending pulled the curtain down, revealing that your choices never actually did matter in Mass Effect, retroactively tainting a lot of your experiences up until that point. The only thing worse than a poor ending is a disappointing one, and Mass Effect 3 managed to be kind of both, which is why it'll be continued to be remembered as one of the worst of all time. Tell me another story about the Shepherd. It's getting late, but okay. One more story. Thanks for watching Mojo Plays. Be sure to subscribe and click on the link in the description below to check out our suggestion page and vote on what content you'd like to see us cover next.